needs to be very careful and anticipate such a big complication in order to prevent it. And uh, the, the incidence of rupture is about 1% of all TAVR procedures. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, frequently this complication uh, remains undetected, sometimes a mild one goes unnoticed. The real incidence uh, is it maybe, some, maybe sometimes more than what is uh, reported. And uh, we need to have uh, some predictors of, uh, this. So if you look at the predictors, very severely calcified iota, aortic annulus, particularly bicuspid valves with eccentric calcium and calcium extending to left ventricular outflow tract. Or again, sizing of the valve is very crucial. I think oversized valve is one of the important predictors. And uh, uh, one needs to analyze, the key is to prevent. So it's very important to analyze the CT very meticulously and to understand the size. So choosing the valve size is uh, very, very important. And to consider uh, when, like the case what we saw now, to do direct implantation rather than to pre-dilate. So to, do, to decide when you need pre-dilatation, whether to do aggressive pre-dilatation and avoid, and whenever avoid post-dilatation. Again, balloon expandable versus self-expandable valve. Again, to decide the risk of annular rupture is much higher with the balloon expandable valves, particularly when they are oversized. And uh, even with self-expanding valves, uh, about uh, uh, pre-dilatation as well as post-dilatation, choosing the appropriate size balloon and not exceeding the diameters. So again, slow deployment and the early identification is a key to manage these cases. And uh, we show you some of our, uh, we had one patient uh, out of our 35 cases, we had one case with the annular rupture, which I would uh, share with you. And uh, this is a 73-year-old lady uh, who had severe aortic stenosis, symptomatic, with a with moderate LV dysfunction, ejection fraction of 35%, very frail and a thin-built lady with a BMI of 14.4. She had the STS score was intermediate with a, with a 4.6 and uh, we, uh, we were, they were keen to have TAVA, so we decided for a TAVA. The CT showed a tricuspid valve and uh, a tricuspid valve with the eccentric calcium, and you see the calcium is more towards the right corner cusp. Huge amount of eccentric calcium. So in such uh, situation, uh, one needs to be uh, very careful, and the possibility of uh, annular rupture should be we should we should predict. And uh, this patient, uh, you could see there is a very eccentric calcium more towards the, the right corner cusp, and we decided to use a, a balloon expandable valve. Though retrospect, uh, maybe you could have considered even a self-expanding valve in this situation, but then uh, she also had a low right coronary height of uh, 9 millimeters, uh, relatively small annulus with a small LV cavity. The annulus area was 330 square millimeters. Again, again to decide on the valve size of this SPAPN3 was again crucial. I think, can I have the slides? So we decided to whether to use a 20 millimeter valve versus 23. And uh, at that point of time, uh, 20 millimeter was not available in, in India. So it's presently available. Sapien 23, 20 is available. At that moment, we had a 23. So we decided to implant a 23 valve. So we balloon sized it again. We did a balloon dilatation and did an angiogram at that time. And once we did a pre dilatation during the dilatation, we injected. And uh, this is a 20 millimeter balloon. We, we, we did uh, consider, we did, we removed 22 ml. So we underfilled the uh, 23 millimeter sapien 3 valve so to be very sure. So we, we removed 2 ml and this was a deployment, very slow deployment. And uh, after the deployment, the patient, the hemodynamics were good. As soon as the valve was implanted, then after a few minutes, we noticed uh, you could see the rupture and there was a shunt. Uh, this was patient was uh, relatively stable for some time. Uh, actually, the shunt was from the uh, from the iota into the right ventricle, and uh, hence this was the RCC to RV shunt. Patient was stable. This was the echocardiogram where you can see the shunt from iota to right ventricle. Patient then was you know we waited for some time. The patient was quite relatively stable at that time, and we had to keep her in the ICU in the monitoring. The next day. She started developing some symptoms, so we thought we should uh, interfere in this uh, patient. So we decided to take her, and uh, we were uh, we we showed a could see the defect. There was a huge defect, and uh, so we decided to use we close this shunt. We used the Amplus duct occluder, uh, 1210 occluder, and the shunt. Uh, we, we closed the shunt, but there was some residual shunt that was present. Uh, I, we didn't want there was some paraval leak as well, so we didn't want to. Do anything for that, but patient is now stable and uh, clinically being followed up, uh, though the shunt uh, remains. So this was our only case who had an annular rupture, 
and uh, I would just show two cases. This is uh, courtesy of Dr. Rajmaka. Uh, this is a patient with Sapien 3 uh, who had uh, uh, 29 millimeter Sapien 3 implantation. And following the implantation, there was a large pericardial effusion uh, with uh, hypotension. And uh, so, if you look at the CT, again there was an eccentric calcium with the area of 541 millimeter square. So, this patient uh, underwent coiling, he did a coiling and following which uh, uh, the rupture was completely closed with coiling. So, so this is again one of so with four coils. So, with uh, he was able to uh, successfully bail out from this uh, uh, serious complication and the patient did uh, well. So, similar there is one more case for, of his which uh, again was uh, this femoral approach uh, was not a good candidate for femoral approach with high calcium. So, they took, went through the subclavian approach and uh, used a 26 millimeter Sapien 3 valve and the valve deployment went well, but then uh, after the valve was deployed, they noticed a huge aortic dissection, type B aortic dissection and as you could see here, there is a type B aortic dissection, uh, but this, uh, you can see that there is no dissection, they are sending aorta and the valve uh, well functioning was good. So, this patient was managed uh, conservatively and uh, this patient did well in medical management on uh, follow-up. Uh, the valve uh, functioning was good, there was no significant paravalvular leak and there was some mitral regurgitation which persisted. So, so to show you these examples, though these complications can happen, one needs to pay attention to how to prevent it and also have some tips and tricks to learn how to manage these dreadful complications. So, all these three patients which we showed were managed, although these patients were had a serious complication, they were all managed and were stabilized. So, multidisciplinary procedure planning and meticulous CT analysis is very important and must have a bailout strategy and drills for different scenarios uh, such as pericardial, uh, pericardial tamponade or root injury and easy access to a heart-lung machine with a surgeon and anesthesiologist is critical uh, in such situations. Thank you.